Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade and welcome to the next tutorial in the Alarms in Game Maker Studio 2.3 series. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about variable alarms. I've made this name up and it's not really that good, uh, but I needed some way to talk about it, so that's what I'm going to call them. Let's jump right over to Game Maker Studio and see what they look like. Here we go. Variable alarms function a lot like the built-in alarms in that they are a variable that holds a value that counts down and it goes off when it reaches zero. I've actually included three different versions over here, but I'm mostly going to focus on this one. So the first thing you'll notice about variable alarms is that you have to initialize a variable. So over here in the create event, we are initializing my alarm A to zero. Much like the built-in alarms, if you want to set an alarm, you give it some value greater than zero. If you want to cancel it, you'd set this value to zero or less. And if you want to know how much time is remaining, you'd simply check the value held by this variable. To run the alarm, you have to write some code though. It no longer happens automatically. So I've put this in the step event. You could obviously put it in the begin step or the end step event, and the code is fairly straightforward. First, you check to see whether or not the value of the alarm is greater than zero. If it is, you decrease it by some amount. You could just put a one in here, and then you check again. You say, is this value, now that it has been decreased, less than or equal to zero? And if so, you do what is right here. I'm keeping this simple, of course, for the sake of demonstration, but you could put whatever you want here. And of course, because you're coding this, there are different ways to do it. So here is another version of the alarm where you're simply decreasing it by some variable. And then if it is less than or equal to zero, you're showing the debug message. Note that the difference between these two versions right here is that this version will only count down if the variable is higher than zero. This version will always count down. This alarm can be useful because it will keep going off if the alarm is below zero, which might be what you want in some circumstances. However, it also never stops counting down, which might have unintended consequences in rare cases. And finally, here's another version. This version I actually got from Yellow Afterlife's post on alarms, which I'll link to below. It basically does all of this in one line, but to do so, it gives up the flexibility of decreasing by a custom variable and locks you into the same thing that built-in alarms have, decreasing by one and only one, again, tied to frames. So this version would be tied to frames, whereas versions A and B are frame independent. You could decrease them by delta time or speed up or slow them down, etc. If we take a look at the alarm object over here, you can see that it just has the create event and the step event, and that's really all you need. So there you go, variable alarms, still pretty simple, still pretty easy to use. So as we did with the built-in alarms, let's diagram these alarm interactions as well. These alarms basically have a variable. That variable can be named whatever you want and you can make as many of them as you want. And you can set, cancel, and get the time from that variable just as you would for a built-in alarm. However, now running is no longer automatic. You must actually write the code yourself, but this gives you the ability to specify whether or not you want to decrease the alarm by one, which is the way the built-in alarms work, or by some other number, such as delta time or something else entirely. And then whenever the alarm goes off, it will do what is in here. So instead of having a separate event, what happens when the alarm goes off is tied to the code that runs the alarm as well. Although of course you could make this a script or something like that, so that what happens in here is a little bit more flexible. So that's what variable alarms are and how to interact with them. So let's talk about the pros and cons. These alarms are still very simple. You can have an unlimited number of them and you can name them and they're not tied to frames, but all of that comes at the slight cost of being kind of a pain. For every alarm you want, you have to remember not only to initialize it, but you actually have to include a section of code somewhere. They're no longer automated and that makes it a little bit more error prone as well. Typos, variable names not matching up, forgetting to put in the code that runs it, and so on. All of these things are now introduced. And because you have to do this for every alarm, you have the possibility of those errors showing up with every alarm. But because of their additional flexibility, I actually use these a lot prior to 2.3, and they could still have their uses. So that's the next type of alarms, what they are, how you interact with them, their pros and cons, and that's it. Thanks for watching.